Hello, Iron Butterflies. We are delighted to introduce you today to the Morris family. So on your far right is Delisa Morris, and then there's Isaac Morris, and then there's Sam, and you already know our Iron Caterpillar on the spot reporter, Shana Levy. So we invited our friends, the Morris family, to tell us a little bit about what was going on in their family and why Sam is particularly an iron caterpillar. So Delisa, tell us a little bit about what happened okay. several, seven years ago. All right, so in March of 2011, Sam got really sick. He was three years old. Um, he was sick for a really long time and just fevers, not really knowing what was going on. Um, it became uh, critical at one point because he wasn't eating or drinking and his doctor was concerned, so she sent him to the hospital. They ran tests on him. They discovered his white blood count uh, was off the roof. So they sent him by ambulance to Dell Children's Hospital where they immediately uh, started more testing. Uh, they didn't know what was wrong with him, um, but they were concerned that he possibly had leukemia. So they did a bone marrow uh, biopsy on him. The doctors came back and said, oh, good news, it's not leukemia. Bad news, we have no idea what's going on. So over the next week or so, he was deteriorating quickly. It became apparent that um, he was dying, um, but they did not know why. So we had many doctors come and look at him and take a look at him. They did know that his liver was enlarged and his spleen was enlarged. He looked like a little pregnant three-year-old boy. His tummy uh, was big and it was painful for him. Um, after multiple tests, another one doctor said, we think it's this rare disease called HLH, which stands for hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. Uh, a big scary name. Um, and uh, they ran tests and said, yes, this is what he has. He needs to start treatment right away because it is fatal if it's not treated. So he began chemo and steroids right away. And within a week, he, was, he came back to life and uh, he continued his treatment. Um, we finally left the hospital and we went into the Dell Children's uh, Oncology Department and where he got his chemo, chemo treatments. And uh, after about an eight weeks, he was fine. So yeah. fully in remission so after fu fully, <clears throat> I think they'd only, after about another you know, few months, they said, he's in remission, he's mm -hmm. fine. And so he goes in for uh, yearly checkups um, just to kind of check up on him and keep him monitored, and uh, you know, he's like fantastic. Okay. Well, Shana, you want to pick up and, and um, ask some so questions? What do you remember? Like, yeah, yeah, what do you remember? Um, I mostly remember the good things, how everybody, everyone was around, so I didn't feel good, but I remember everybody acting like I was normal, and it felt like I was just kind of staying at home. And but everybody would come and see me all the time. Uh, what do you remember? Um, I remember that he got tons of gifts. <laughs> tons and tons of gifts. I would be jealous. Yeah. So a lot of attention. So it's, yes. it's hard when you have somebody in the family because you have five children in your yes. family. So to have four children watching their baby brother, well, not all babies, I guess, but um, watching their brother go through this is really, really hard. And so sometimes it's hard for the parents because you don't get as much time with all your children because you're focusing on one. So do you think that this, because this happened so many years ago, do you think it still affects your life today? No, not really. I mean, my life is pretty normal. What do you like to do, like, for fun? I play hockey. So what are you acting in? Well, I just go to like different acting things, clubs. In Austin or Round Rock or? Um, yeah. Yeah. Was for, for school. In your school? Yeah, there's yeah. an acting club at our school, so. Oh, good. He participates in that. And, and what grade are you in? I'm in fifth grade. I like music. And yeah. what's your favorite subject? Probably science. Probably science. So you come from a large family, Elisa, and so how did your family uh, come together? I'm sure that they were very supportive and Yes, and yes, it was, we're all here in Austin, and um, 
my mom took my two older kids who were still in school. Mm -hmm. And so she came home, she came uh, to live with them while they were at school. Mm -hmm. And then I had a younger daughter who was about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And she went with my sister who was staying at home with her children at the time. Mm -hmm. So she took her. And so it was, it was a huge blessing because that weight of, I knew my kids were being taken care of mm -hmm. and I could focus on Sam. You know, I knew that they were being fed, they were being loved, they were being taken care of. They would come and visit Sam every once in a while, um, but I didn't have to worry about them. So having mm -hmm. family around was mm -hmm. was just a huge blessing for us. Mm -hmm. Were there any other any other blessings that happened along the way? Any interesting people that you met or anything you learned? There were huge blessings everywhere. Really, so not only my family, my sisters, my mom, um, Everybody came together, but also our church community. Mm -hmm. um, we, my husband and I kind of really started getting involved in church and it was just like the hands of God were just around us. And mm -hmm. um, we could feel like, you know, in the time when you kind of can feel alone and abandoned, I didn't feel that mm -hmm. because I knew that God had sent these beautiful angels everywhere. They provided meals. Um, they prayed for him. I got notes from people from everywhere, strangers, that they were praying for Sam. Mm -hmm. And just to know that people took the time to think about him and pray mm -hmm. for him, I was like, we're not alone. Mm -hmm. So how does that make you feel, Sam, knowing that all these people you didn't know were saying prayers for you? It made me feel special. It made me feel good. Mm -hmm. And people coming with me make me feel happy and feel good about the pain and okay. everything that was happening. Made me just come alive. So, have you ever known anybody of your friends who have been sick, or of your friends' families, where somebody's maybe been sick? Sort of. Sort of. And then, how how do you treat them then? I treat them like they're Yeah. Well, that's one interesting thing because Shana brought that up about how when we were we were talking about it before you got here that sometimes when somebody's sick, people treat them differently are very in a very fragile state because we're worried about that remember were you thinking about that? i hate it when people just speak to you like you're less just because you're younger or you're sick so what would you say to someone that was going through like the same sort of thing as you i'd probably just act normal and say nice things but really not try to like, mind them about it Mm -hmm. And just try to try to shift them away from their sadness or pain and drive them somewhere better. Mm -hmm. Totally better. So keep them keep them focused on some other things so that it gets their minds off of what they're what they're going through. Yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Is there anything you would want to give advice to parents of children going through difficult times? Um, I think just. Really, honestly, I don't know how we would have gone through this without our faith, mm -hmm. um, without a, a different purpose and um, our community around us, mm -hmm. um, and really just accepting help when people offer it. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes we are so independent, we want to do mm -hmm. everything ourselves, um, and in times like this, we couldn't, and we had to accept help and ask for help. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, oh, a big thing, when your child is sick and in the hospital, you are your child's advocate. They cannot speak up. Um, doctors will often overlook. I had a doctor that kind of dismissed him. Um, and you need to speak up for your child. Mm -hmm. And you have to be brave. And you cannot be afraid to question those doctors because they don't know everything. Um, and so ask questions, ask questions, and uh, fight, for your, fight for your kid. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all very, very much for shedding the light on this beautiful iron caterpillar. And we just appreciate you coming in. And let's fly forward together.